quite a big question, but I mean, feel free to reply as you want. What are to you the biggest challenges to face in the neuroscientific field in the next in the, years? In the neuroscientific the yes. field? Well, mm. one is better understanding, the, the other is uh, fighting neurological and psychiatric diseases, you know. And of course the second one rests to a great deal on answers from the first one. Uh, now specifically, I do think that that the new optogenetic methods uh, provide a, a completely new approach. You know? uh, I think there are still challenges to optimize the new methods, optogenetic methods, and then to find clever clever uses. You know? Personally, I'm working on the field of short-term synaptic plasticity, mm -hmm. uh, which is a field or, uh, which, which uh, uh, um, uh, tries to understand phenomena which have been described early on, already in the 50s. There were, over the decades, many attempts to, to um, get a biophysical understanding of uh, what happens uh, in these dynamic changes and synaptic strengths, but I still think we are not yet at the point where we uh, exactly know what what happens, you know, when 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 synapses change their strength on a short time scale. But the next great discovery you yeah. think there could be in brain sciences? Um, well, I'm not so much looking for great discoveries. I see the whole field as advancing as a kind of front, you know, advancing uh, slowly. I think that the understanding will come more from computational neuroscience than from experiment or say maybe will come best from a combination of clever experiment with computational approaches. Or I think that many of the principles uh, uh, of information processing are quite well understood by uh, computational neurosciences and, and that, that uh, uh, for us experimentalists the main task is to understand how nature implements some of the principles of information processing in the brain. Europe and the uh, United States uh, mm -hmm. uh, have two great projects on uh, mm -hmm. brain research. Do you think there will be uh, a match between them or they will work together? They are different approaches. Yeah, I'm sure uh, they will work together in the sense that, of course, both participants in most programs will publish the results and um, may have joint meetings or so, you know, uh, which is just common in science. That, um, I mean, scientific endeavor is a worldwide effort. You know. the, the Americans are concentrating on, at least for the moment, a new technology to, uh, to, to map out connections, new technologies to study the brain, which I think is um, a problem more appropriate for such a big, more or less top-down organized uh, project as the European Brain Project. Uh, the essence, as I understand it, of the European project is to put together the knowledge about the brain into a computer, into a, uh, a computerized brain. And this is of course a, a goal, you know, which, which is fascinating, which uh, if it works would be fantastic, but I don't think that it will work. You know, because we lack uh, too much information, I mean exactly that information which the Americans want to gather, you know, to build a kind of biomimetic uh, a computer brain. What the European Brain Project um, does is to or tries to, to put as much detail as possible into the computer, you know, and, and, and then hope that what comes out of that uh, is somehow, somehow similar to what the brain does, but I'm skeptical.